Hi, this is Jill from Inhabitat, and I'm here today with Paola Antonelli, the Senior Curator of Architecture and Design at MoMA. We're here today to look at her new exhibit that just opened, Talk to Me. So what was the inspiration for the Talk to Me exhibit? All the exhibition about contemporary design tend to be inspired by what's happening in the world. And today, one of the issues that seem to be really important to us is how we communicate, not only between and amongst ourselves, but also with objects. We always had a rapport with objects throughout history, you know, sentimental maybe, or even just functional, but right now, because of the digital revolution, we expect objects to actually have some sort of communication that's explicit with us. So the tween bot is one of the mascots of the exhibition because it really represents how people react to objects. It was designed by Casey Kinzer. Casey would take the little robot, wind it up, leave it in the middle of Washington Square, and just film what people were doing. They would go crazy just like helping the little robot, talking to it, it would get stuck and they would unstick it. The interaction and the reaction was beautiful. Oh, you cannot, you cannot, take, you cannot touch it, are you kidding me? No, <laughs> you're in a museum, look. This that you see here, which is quite a beautiful artifact, is called Artificial Biological Clock. It hinges on an issue that we all know very well, which is being women today and having a career and deciding whether to have children and thinking that it's never the right moment. So this clock is connected to the fertility cycles, but it's also connected to your banker, your gynecologist and your therapist. And when everything aligns, you know, it just gives you this alert saying, now, now or never. So I mean, it's, it makes you smile, but at the same time, it's very serious. So much of critical design is about getting people to think. It's not about problem solving anymore which is the old cliche about design, but it's rather about designing problems and about giving you questions to think of. We're entering an era where everyone is becoming more and more digitized, I think connected to technological devices, and I think it's changing the way that people interact with each other. Um, are you concerned at all about how this is impacting um, people's lives and social behavior? I'm not. You know, the funny thing is that that same argument was heard also at the beginning of the 20th century with the introduction of the telephone. Every time there's a so-called disruptive innovation, people are worried, and, I, and rightly so. I mean, there's consequences to a change in behavior and being able to always be in connection. But at the same time, you need to stimulate good design, and good design is not only pretty objects, it's good behavior, it's a better balance uh, between technology and, and, and human beings. Every time there's an innovation, it's called disruptive for a reason, because it creates a problem, it creates a rupture, it creates a break in both an individual routine and in the way people have interacted with each other for centuries. And so um, design can help this disruption become part of life, integrate itself into life faster and better. So that's what we like to think of designers as, as the people that make revolutions become life. It seems in some way that this, that this exhibit is sort of showcasing how design is moving away from designing objects and moving more and more into designing experiences. What kind of impact do you think this has on the world we live in and maybe the, the element of sustainability? We have been living in more than one world for quite a while. I mean, design has not been only our furniture or our cars, but also it's been the interfaces of the websites that we live in, the interface of our email program. But what's happening right now is that the virtual world is only one of the possible extension of traditional design. A form of design that is relatively new, it's old but new, is critical design. Critical design is about commenting on the possible consequences of technology, even dystopian ones, and there's a lot of examples of that in the exhibition because 
Since these designers focus on crucial issues, they focus a lot also on communication. But all in all, I think that what we're seeing today is designers becoming much more econom economical and sustainable also about their own careers. It's not possible anymore to build objects that people will throw away in just a short amount of time because people think that one of the possible ways to be sustainable is to say have a washing machine that lasts 15 years instead of three. So that's one way to go. What happens there is that it means fewer appliances and fewer design opportunities for traditional forms of design. But there's a whole world that is on the web that's a whole world that is about behaviors. That's a, there's a whole world that is about interactions. So there is this amazing infiltration of design in all the facets of our lives that goes well beyond the traditional furniture, products, and cars. And I'm so happy about it because, as you said, this is truly the moment to not only study, but also validate this form of design and give it some benchmarks by doing collective shows like this. That's all for now. If you want to check out the Talk To Me exhibit, it's on display through November 7th at MoMA.